Having moved on from Death Valley, I'm now in Zion National Park. This is a location that seems to contradict itself by being incredibly beautiful and incredibly challenging to photograph at the same time. Things are different here. You don't photograph sunrise and sunset. Instead, you follow the light during the day as it bounces around, falling on and illuminating intimate scenes that lie within the walls of these giant canyons. I spent my first day exploring and observing the light. Turning up in Zion and shooting images without taking time to explore would make things very difficult. And as I arrived a day early, I had the luxury of time, which is the most valuable asset a landscape photographer can have. So I've returned to a location that I scouted out yesterday. As I mentioned before, Zion isn't really one of those places where you can just turn up and find a shot because the light is so different here. It's bouncing off all the canyon walls. It's good for a few minutes here, good for a few minutes there. And if you miss the light, if you miss that short window of opportunity, then that's it. So when I was scouting out this location yesterday, I was probably two hours too late and the lighting was really harsh but now I can see the sunlight just moving down the canyon walls behind me. And soon enough that light's gonna hit this meadow and then hit the subject I'm looking at now. And when that happens, the moment the light hits my subject, that's when I'm gonna take the image. <sighs> it's just a case of waiting patiently, making sure that I spend time getting the composition as good as I can get it to be and just enjoying being here. I think landscape photography is best enjoyed at a slow pace. I think there's a culture, almost like an Instagram culture of running around, snapping everything and moving on to the next so you have lots of content. And I think it's a shame because there is an awful lot to be said for standing in a freezing cold meadow and just slowly watching the light change and your image come to life. So the subject that I'm photographing this morning is this group of trees just here now. What caught my eye with these trees was the fact that there was still lots of colour there, especially at this time of year considering it's mid-January now. These are all dead decaying leaves on this tree but they still have a wonderfully golden brown rich colour to them and texture and that caught my eye because you know the park's pretty much dead at this time of year in mid-January um, so to see pockets of colour was quite exciting and the rich golden brown of the leaves complements the red canyon wall so well. So I'm so excited uh, or hopeful for this shot anyway. Another thing with this composition is it's very chaotic here in Zion and as soon as you think you've found a subject and you go to frame and compose it what happens is everything else gets in the way. Everything's very chaotic uh, so it's difficult to isolate a subject and make a clean composition and I I think I can just about do this. Now, when I arrived here yesterday, at, at, when I was scouting the area, the light was backlighting these trees and it looked phenomenal. But it was also hitting the background and, and almost the canyon wall and it, it, the, the lighting was too harsh and it was just, it was no good, but I could see the potential. So what I'm hoping for this morning is as the light moves down the canyon wall and floods this valley, it's going to hit those trees before it continues on through the meadow up to the canyon walls. And if I take the image at the exact moment when the light kisses these trees, then I should get a lovely backlit image that isn't too harsh. And more importantly, the background and all of that chaos in the background and all of the canyon walls will remain in shadow. So I'm gonna get that contrast and that separation between the background and the subject. So I am hopeful that this is going to work.
So we finally have sunshine and it's so nice to feel the warmth of the sun on my face. But it is actually causing a few problems there and that is lens flare. The sun has come up more so in front of the camera than I thought it would. So I'm having to use my memory card pouch to shield the lens from the sun but it's very difficult. I've also had to use a three stop medium edge graduated filter upside down because the grass here in front is starting to blow out. Um, I'm just trying to control that with a graduated filter. Um, but yeah, the contrast is certainly striking. It's very contrasting, the dark canyon wall in the background. So I'm gonna capture this image now using the filter pouch to shield the sun from the lens. Or shield the lens from the sun, rather. Focus on the tree, and there we go. Simple as that. You wait for so long and then it's all over in just a few seconds. So that was, um, that was more hectic than I thought, to be honest. As soon as the light came over the, the canyon walls and hit the tree, I was, uh, I was, it, it all happened so fast and with the light streaming into the lens and having to manage that and try and block out the sunlight hitting the lens so I don't get the lens flare. And with the light moving so fast and then the foreground burning out and having to use the grad filter upside down, the whole thing went from a couple of hours of pure bliss and calm to a couple of minutes of hectic photography trying to, trying to shield the light and shoot the image and uh, correctly expose. It was good, I'm gonna lie, it was, it was more difficult than I anticipated. But I suppose that's the benefit of coming to an area time and time again is that you can learn these things. So now I know, next time, I'll have an idea of what's gonna happen if I come down to a meadow like this. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go to another area of the park now and try and shoot some compositions that I found yesterday whilst exploring. So very much uh, looking forward to this. Glad I got that image, but I'm not gonna lie, it was a struggle, it really was. I'd say a good morning so far, but let's move on and shoot another image. scene that I spotted yesterday is right here in front of me now. The reason I didn't photograph this yesterday is because, well, it was pretty much dark by the time I got out of the canyon, so I spotted it on my way out um, and made a mental note to come back when the light was much better. And I'm happy to say that the light right now is just lovely. The subject itself is in shade but all of the canyon walls around us have sunlight and that sunlight is hitting the canyon walls and bouncing back into this darker shaded area. So the scene that I'm actually photographing is this lovely group of trees behind me. And the reason these trees caught my eye is because they have just have hundreds and hundreds of golden yellow seeds hanging off the trees. Now, I'm sure I keep repeating myself, but I wasn't expecting to see much color in Zion in the winter. And Zion for me is all about those intimate detailed shots. It's not about the grandeur. It's about the tiny hidden scenes that you can explore and find. And this is just a, another example of that. Rather than shooting wide and trying to get the whole tree in or the group of trees in. I'm actually using a 70 to 200 at 200 mil and I'm focusing on those individual seeds so I'm going in really tight and just filling the frame with gold <laughs> and it looks really nice. I'm shooting at f5.6 so quite a wide aperture and that's to, to give me that 
fall off into the background. I, want, I don't want any distractions, I just want you to see speckled gold and not much else. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. If I shot this at f11, the depth of field would be too great and there'd be too much distraction with twigs and sticks and rocks and everything in the background. So, let's have a look. f5.6, 200 mil focusing on the golden seeds. I don't have my cable release because I, I left it um, in the meadow. So I have to go and retrieve that later on, I think. Um, so I'm using a two second timer so there's no camera shake when I press the shutter. I'm using a polarizer just to, just to cut out any glare because some of those branches and seeds might be catching the reflection of the blue sky and I just want to minimize that to give me a, a more vibrant, rich image. Um, that's it, don't really know what else to say. It's quite straightforward. It's all about seeing the image in the bigger landscape. That's the challenge here and that's also the fun. So I'll grab this image and uh, yeah, just enjoy the moment. Simple as that. So that's it, that's me done. Two days exploring Zion. And you know, it's, it's not been easy, but I knew it wouldn't be easy when Wex offered to send me somewhere. The reason I chose Zion is because it was going to be difficult, yet the reward isn't just the photography. The reward is the scenery and the hiking and the exploring, that's the real reward. You know, you should never put pressure on yourself, or well, I certainly don't put pressure on myself to produce, you know, I don't know, five or six images a day. It's always just, you know, if you get one image that you're happy with from a trip, then that's a success. And uh, yeah, I think I've certainly done that from this trip. Death Valley was amazing. Zion was a challenge, but a thoroughly enjoyable one. So massive thank you to Wex for sending me, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed Death Valley as well. So yeah, um, subscribe to Wex and their channel and um, yeah maybe maybe they'll send me somewhere again we'll see but yeah thank you for watching and yeah get out there do some exploring and enjoy some photography all right bye for now <laughs>